The motion is agreed to. The delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Fairfax County, Delegate Keene. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'd like to ask that we return to the portion of the morning hour for points of personal privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I recognize the time, and I know it's been a long day already, so I uh, don't mean to trespass on the time of this uh, body, but I wanted to uh, share some thoughts today, both in the timing of this week and also in the context of some of the legislation that we have seen and will see going forward, and especially with a new governor that has uh, started his uh, inaugural term talking about grand aspirations to bring us together and work together to really become one commonwealth. I believe in him and I, I want to work with him to get to that point, but I think in order for us to get to that goal, we also have to understand each other a little bit better. And so in the spirit of working together and looking for that common ground and unity, I'd like to just share some thoughts today. A couple of days ago on Tuesday, when we began uh, February 1st, Black History Month, my good friend here, uh, Delegate Lamont Bagby, who chairs the Black Caucus, did a great job in presenting a, a, a small part of the very robust and rich African-American history. And I look forward to hearing from members on both sides of the aisle sharing the very different uh, parts of our Virginia history, which is African-American history and vice versa. And I, I know that that's one of our, uh, the more enjoyable parts of this Commonwealth uh, General Assembly session. But the same day, February 1st this year, when we began the Black History Month, just by coincidence, coincidence happened to be the beginning of a Lunar New Year. And the Lunar New Year goes for about two weeks, and so we're right in the middle of this now, in the beginning of this. And for those of you who are might, not, might not be as familiar with the concept of Lunar New Year, some of you might have heard of it called Chinese New Year. And there's frankly nothing wrong with calling it Chinese New Year, but for people like me who is of Korean ancestry and many of us uh, in Virginia and elsewhere, we prefer the term Lunar New Year because it's inclusive of all those Asian countries that celebrate this particular uh, you know, lunar time of the, of the year when we consider it to be a new year. And in some countries in Asia, it's a huge deal. Many of you may have been invited if you haven't already been uh, attending these Lunar New Year calendars are celebrations throughout your com in the district and elsewhere where your constituents who may be of Asian descent or who might follow the Asian culture might be celebrating this week because it's a huge deal. And uh, if you're back in China or Korea and other countries, they get a two-week uh, holiday and then go visit their family and they share lots of tasty meals and such. But I bring that up today because the coincidence of Lunar New Year and Black History Month starting on the same day this year, I believe is very symbolic and significant for the Commonwealth of Virginia. This is also the same year, first Black History Month that we're commemorating, uh, or at least in, the, in, in person today, together, where we have a Vice President of the United States who is of black and Asian ancestry. Half of her parents are from the Caribbean, the other half is from India. We also have the leader on the other uh, chamber who presides over that chamber is black and also an immigrant. So it's a combination of somebody who has life experiences of living overseas, coming to this country, and succeeding and becoming an elected official who also happens to be minority by race. You see, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, today's Virginia is not as clear-cut as a black and white Virginia. It is a Virginia of ands, not ors. It's a Virginia that's not based on division but on aspiration of unity. It's a division that used to separate us literally where brothers picked up arms against each other, to now where we bring those conversations that made uh, separate us philosophically, ideology-wise, and we bring it here so that we can have a robust debate, so that we do it in a civil way to see where the issues are, and whichever side wins, wins, and whichever side loses, we fight to come back another day and fight. And that's the spirit of policy discussion that I'd like to see. And the reason why, as, uh, as an Asian American myself, I stand today to express this view is because 13 years ago, when I started this job, when I was sitting in that corner there, there wasn't anybody else in this chamber that looked like me. I was elected to be the first person who was born in Asia, just like uh, Lieutenant Governor Sears, born overseas, came to this country as an immigrant, became naturalized, and eventually found my home in Virginia and ran for office. So when I was elected, a lot of people, especially from the community, said, congratulations, you've become the first uh, Asian you know, elected official, what have you. And I said, look, somebody had to be first. Sorry, that was me. Somebody had to be first. I don't mind being the first, but I don't want to be the last. So today, I look around this chamber, and I see wonderful colleagues who share my life experiences, my ethnic heritage, and my uh, viewpoints based on the work that I've done as, as an Asian American in this country, reflected as a member of your body. 
And because we now have so many of us in this chamber, we formally formed ourselves an Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus for the first time in the Commonwealth's history. And so, so far we have, I believe, five or six of us who are uh, part of this community here in this uh, chamber. The other chamber also has a member as well. But the reason on behalf of the Caucus of Asian Americans Pacific Islander I stand today when we commemorate Black History Month is because I want to explain something that I'm sure some of you already know, but I think this is an important point for us to remember as we have these debates. I would not be standing here today Neither would my colleagues here of the Asian Caucus if it wasn't for those that came before us who made that possible, who opened those doors, who struggled, who sacrificed, and yes, who lost their lives in order for people like me to be here. We know Virginia history well, and for the first 250 of the 400 years, many of our brothers and sisters were not treated as equals, even if though our documents declare that they were. And in the 150 years after the end of the Civil War, we have struggled mightily to bring that equality and equity and justice for all Virginians. We're still trying every day to make that a better, more perfect union. But as we try to study that history and find out the good, bad, and the ugly, as some might say, and to make sure that our next generation is taught that history, we also should be careful to ensure that histories of all Virginians those that were here before and those that are today and those that will come to in the future are also taught. And the reason why I think that's really important is because if you didn't know that we were, that Asian Americans were in this country during the time of the Civil War, you're missing out on a really interesting story. There were Asians in this country working on both sides of the war, mostly as laundromat, uh, laundry workers and cooks and others because they didn't have the rights that others enjoyed. And following the Civil War, as our nation was reconstructing, at the exact time that our country and this Commonwealth was reconstructing to come back as a union, even though the formerly enslaved people were freed by declaration and by constitutional amendments, there were hundreds and thousands of Asians across the country that were building the railroad, died on that labor railroad. And on May 10th of 1869, just a few years after the Civil War was ended, in the middle of the country, in uh, Promontory, Promontory Point in Utah, the last spike was inserted to connect the two railroad lines so that the United, nation, United States became one nation. In the picture that was taken of that historic moment, there's not a single person who looks like me, even though people who, of my ancestry were the ones that built that railroad. So you see, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, the Asian American history is not only lacking in the history books, there's nothing to be inaccurate about because there's not much substance there to start with. And so as we talk about making sure that the good, bad, and ugly of history is taught and, and, and done in a way that is educational for everyone, let's make sure that Asian American history, uh, Latino history, uh, the history of our brothers and sisters with different faiths and different traditions are all also taught as well. And I don't believe, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that there's anything inherently divisive about that. Because all we're trying to do is tell each other our life stories. And that for you to understand mine and you, for, for me to understand yours, that way we can have a, a, a community that's of, of um, equality and equity that we all strive for. So let me just conclude with this, Mr. Port, Mr. Speaker. There was a time when I mentioned that I would not have been here if it wasn't for other people. We are all very familiar with the August speech of 1963 when Reverend Martin Luther King led that speech. We hear quotes from all sides of the aisle around January uh, 15th. That march was significant, not just because of the speech and the rallying, but that led directly to White House and Congress passing the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The president at the time said, you know what, we gotta do something about this discrimination. So the 64 Immigration Act, uh, Civil Rights Act was passed. And then they worked on the next rights, which is voting rights, so critical to all of us. And so the 1965 Voting Rights was Act was passed and authorized a few times, unfortunately still not authorized. That's another story for another day. But in that context of the civil rights movement, when blacks and whites from north and the south, conservatives and liberals all came together and said, we need to do something to unite our nation and bring us together, they realized we would be hypocritical as a nation if we said that we care about non-discrimination and unity just within our own borders. We would be a hypocritical nation that cannot lead in global moral standards if we don't also express to the rest of the world that we welcome you without discriminating. 
So in 1965, as a result of the 64 Civil Rights Act, 65 Voting Rights Act, Congress also passed the Immigration Nationality Act, which allowed for, got rid of the quotas and instead brought people by based on merits and other reasons why we want them to come to America. That is a law that allowed my parents to come to this country in 1980. That is a law that many of my colleagues here, whose parents, and maybe some grandparents, uh, were allowed to come to this country. And that, my friends, is a law, among many other laws, that your constituents of African American descent, black, uh, Asian descent, Latino descent, are benefiting from. So as we debate these issues, I implore you, I understand politics, I understand partisanship, I certainly understand campaigns, but that season is over. Can we focus on what the laws will do and what it won't do? And can we focus on what it will do for our, par our kids and their next generation? Because if we do it right, there may be another kid a decade or two down the road who says, because of the work that the General Assembly did, my life has been changed. That's what I hope for, and that's the unity that I'm looking for. So, Mr. Speaker, as we celebrate Black History Month, I want to thank my African-American brothers and sisters, because without the work of that uh, civil rights movement and the Voting Rights Act that's so critical, I wouldn't be here. I want to thank the, uh, all the folks that helped us bring history so that I can learn about my own history and teach others. And I hope that when you go home this weekend, you see Asian Americans or African Americans or others, please share this history with them so that they know that their Commonwealth is represented by you. Thank you.